Hello Brian, I have brought for you the track and the carts, but I was unable to locate my green cart, so sorry about that. That means that we won't be able to use the optical sensor for motion, and we're going to have to use the sonic sensor for motion, the click, the, 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 the one that senses motion by echo, by click echoes, right? So that, that's this thing. Now, uh, the way you operate this thing for the cart is you set it to the cart setting, you plug in the, um, this is known as the BTD cable, and um, British Telecom Digital. So uh, the BTD, the BTD cable goes into the LabQuest 2 in one of the digital ports. Now there are digital ports and there are analog ports. The BTD cable will not fit in the analog port. It will only fit in the digital port. Now I brought two of these in case you wanted to um, put one on either side. So you can remove this stop by unscrewing this and you can set this guy up on the other side. If you wanted to um, sense the motion of two cars at the same time, right? Now, um, the these things have a certain minimum distance. I believe it's 20 centimeters, something like that. So they wouldn't be able to give you accurate data if if the car were to come within 20 centimeters of the sensor. So, so data would be collected accurately right about here. And then uh, inside here, I'm not sure if that would be accurate. Okay, now I'm going to um, show you how to uh, do the data collection. So I'm gonna press the home button and press the, uh, whoops, and press the LabQuest app. All right, there we are, LabQuest app, and then I don't just collect data right off, and because you see the, the, the default duration is five seconds and the rate is 20 samples per second, it's best to get, uh, to put the uh, duration to something a little more reasonable, um, maybe like uh, 30 seconds, something like that. I'm just gonna put 33 for now. All right, so, uh, and then I'm gonna change uh, the rate. 20 seconds is the default, I think 100, uh, uh, 20 samples per second is a default. I think it it can do up to 100 samples per second, clicks per second, but I think I'm gonna try 50 and see how uh, see what happens. Now, the difference between the sonic motion sensing and the optical motion sensing is that sometimes the sonic motion sensing um, contains noise. So I'm gonna press play here. I'm gonna press the play button here. And there, there's the graph and I'm gonna do some motion here, all right. Okay, so that's that's my experiment. I'm gonna stop this by pressing uh, play again, all right. And you see this, uh, these high peaks, That's that was when the um, cart crashed into the sensor. So that's, that's just noise and uh, the, the peak of interest is right here. The peaks of interest are right here, okay? Now I've got position over here and velocity over here. Um, it can also give you acceleration. Uh, it just calculates some derivatives by itself. Um, so I have, um, in, in a previous video from last year, I have some details on how to handle the data analysis, um, how to make the graph give you the area under the curve or the slope at any, at any given point. So I'll include a link to back to that video if you want to see that again. And that is, uh, that's the, that's it for the motion sensing. Now, I understand from our emails that you're handling Mr. Hatcher and the other guy they both wanted um, carbon dioxide sensors, and so these are the carbon dioxide sensors. There are two of them, one for each of those dudes, and they both wanted dissolved oxygen sensors. So this is a dissolved oxygen sensor, one for each dude. Now, the dissolved oxygen sensor has this sponge here, and the, so it, it uh, this actually comes off here. Let me uh, show you about that. So this can come off. Oops. So this sponge can come off 
right? And then this whole that this whole clear plastic thing can also come off. I'm trying to take it off here for you. Okay, so I've removed the whole clear plastic thing. If your guys are going to be doing experiments in water, they want to put this probe in the water. If your guys are going to be doing experiment in the air, they want to put the probe inside the, the clear plastic thing and they want to wet that sponge. They want to make this sponge wet. I'm sorry. They want to make this yellow sponge wet and keep that on, right? Uh, for some reason, when the humidity is high, uh, the oxygen sensor works better, right? But this oxygen sensor is good for air or for water, right? Now, importantly, uh, these guys have BTA connectors, British Telecom um, Analog. So the BTA connectors do not go in the BTD ports, they go into the analog ports right there, all right? So I have uh, brought um, some extra LabQuest 2 devices that you could lend to the boys. And uh, another important thing is that the carbon dioxide sensor will not work in water. The carbon dioxide sensor is only for in-air measurements. And, uh, annoyingly, the carbon dioxide sensor is not good when the humidity is high. The accuracy drops when the humidity is high. Here's how the carbon dioxide sensor works. There is a, a, a tiny light bulb or something like that, some, some heating element in here, and it measures how much heat is getting absorbed. That is how it measures carbon dioxide. So. If there's excessive water vapor, that's going to be interpreted as carbon dioxide. If you have methane gas all over the place, and you shouldn't, right? That, that might also be determined, uh, uh, be, be, be um, mistaken for carbon dioxide. So that's how this thing works. Now this, this is a very fancy piece of equipment. This directly measures oxygen, and here's how it does it. There is a solid plastic wafer in here impregnated with this dye, and the dye fluoresces in the presence of oxygen. So this thing is measuring fluorescence of that plastic wafer that contains dye. It's very, very, it's, uh, it's, it's, so, it, it's so convenient that you don't need to calibrate it. The usual dissolved oxygen sensor, which was called the polarographic sensor, had to be calibrated with, with a couple of different uh, solutions and it was horrible to use. But anyways, uh, I'll leave the boy stuff in this box and I'll leave your stuff in this box and I'll leave all of these things in this corner of the science room. Thank you, Brian.